any business. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason you're talking to people that are licensed like 2008 a lot of the time, it's because those are the people that made it out of a crappy market. Yeah. Probably the best time that you can get a license. Yeah. Like the people that make it over the next two years right now, those are gonna be your agents for the next 20 years. Yeah. There's a lot that aren't gonna make it out. Well, a come to the Big Deal Real Estate Podcast. We talk about things pertaining to Vancouver real estate and its suburbs. We talk about business in general, and we also like to bring on people who are kind of a big deal. I'm your co-host, that AJ Kelly here at Jarrett White, that guy that does mortgages. If you're watching this on YouTube, leave us a comment, a like, subscribe. We're trying to pass the Vancouver Real Estate Podcast in uh, stars and ratings on Spotify, so please help us do that if you enjoy this podcast more than the Vancouver Real Estate Podcast. <laughs> and uh, our guest today, Mr. Steve Karish. Thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks, Thank, thanks for coming all the way out to see me. I appreciate it. I got to get home to see kids, so I couldn't come see you guys, but this is awesome. This is a nice office here. You guys got a nice setup. It's a good spot. Yeah. I'm a big fan of uh, my brokerage, and I think everybody should be, right? So That's right. This is a good spot. They did a really good solid by um, basically organizing us here, right? We used to be in the wrong end of town. They moved us to the right end of town. I don't do business in the right end of town. It looks like it's pretty newly renovated. Yeah, it's right? like 2017. Yeah, it's pretty so we're like five years, mm. five, six years now. So why do you filter your comments on YouTube? Why do I filter? Um, I do filter some comments, usually name calling. Right. Um, when it comes to YouTube, I argue with people quite a bit <laughs> in the comments. Um, but... Uh, a friend of mine put it like this. He's like, listen, uh, my YouTube channel is a public place. So is my front doorstep. You can't come shit on my front doorstep. Simple as that. I don't need to put up with, I mean, the conspiracy theories, the tinfoil hats, all the BS that's out there, that's fine. I let most of it go. When people uh, name call, that's gone. Racism, obviously gone. Um, with our podcast, we found there was some sexism problems gone. Um, it's just not something that's, I think, necessary. If you want to have a good debate, I'm good. But if you come in and just dump on me for for no reason, without any backing, like if you think the World Economic Forum or whatever is coming for you, go for it. But um, I don't know. I just don't have a lot of time for that sort of shit. I hear you. So it's you, a, it's when, a rabbit when hole. When you say you filter them, you, like, you just delete them? Um, depending. Like, you'll get the occasional person that will be relentless yeah. and just attack other people on your channel and all that stuff, and you can just hide user. Oh, okay. Right? Um, I don't know if you ever saw YouTube comments, but when you do, there's a lot of people trying to sell you Bitcoin. Obviously, those are all gone. <laughs> yeah. Right? But there's a lot of just super negative people that won't listen to reason and if they're gonna dump beat oh, it yeah. tell me about it beat man. it i know right i know like they're losers yeah like, I, know. I, I don't always often um you know have a have a forum like this to maybe go after those people and say certain things but like you can be as negative as you want to be that's cool i like to press the edge with being sarcastic being a jerk or whatever um but do do I need all that just sitting there when it's probably somebody that has no real basis for what they're really saying or the way they really believe? Probably don't need it there. Totally, completely agree. Um, so I guess tell us about Steve Karish, man. What's your story? What do you do? Where do you serve? Uh, fat kid from Surrey, man. Born and raised. That's that's about it. Um, Whereabouts in Surrey? Uh, I was born at SMH. I was uh, serving Memorial that, Hospital. Okay, right. yeah, yeah. My kids were too, so we're like an alum now. That's like yeah. the closest thing I got to college is my kids are going to the same uh, hospital as me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the wrong side of the track. So, you know, grew up anywhere north of Highway 10, basically, you know, moved around. Uh, well, my family was stable, but, you know, parents were split. So multiple different yeah. houses, different locations, that sort of thing. And uh, 
yeah, I never thought I would end up in this business. That's what for you, sure. What did you think you would end up in all throughout high school and stuff? And After high school, I got a job in a fiberglass plant. Do you want to know an industry that sucks? Sand fiberglass for a living. Oh, man. I used to, when I was a plumber, you get in a ceiling or whatever, yeah. or even just cutting out drywall, and then you have to shower. It's yeah. done. It's in your clothes. You're ruined for the day after that. Totally. Yeah. And um, then I went into food equipment. It's not nearly as <laughs> glamorous as it sounds. Yeah. Right? And then uh, I had a friend in Seattle, best friend in the world, John by if you're watching. Um, he was just like, dude, you got to get into something that has more potential. I was like, oh, I don't know what that is. And he's like, well, I sell real estate. You should do that too. That's where we ended up. Um, I had another friend at the time uh, that was doing it here, was getting licensed here and followed him. How long ago was that? Uh, licensed to December 15th, so December 16th, 2008. So two oh. months after the financial crisis mm, to perfect. the day. Yeah, perfect, perfect time, time to get yeah, in. It seems like a lot of the people we talk to all say that they got licensed right around that time. Yeah. You know why that is? Why? Because first of all, the market was good, similar to the run-up we've seen now, right? Like Fraser Valley Board, are you guys Fraser Valley Board license? Or I'm what? actually with the Thank REBGV, but I'm a Fraser Valley realtor. Okay. So I'm a broker, so it's So you're not, yeah. yeah. Um, but now under the BCFSA, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all the same family then. Um, but like Vancouver Board, I don't know the stats. Fraser Valley Board's had like 600 agents added in the last six months. Yeah, I noticed that the numbers are going up in the REBGV yeah. too. So the market goes good, everybody dumps in the course, market dumps, everybody gets their license, they don't do any business. Yeah. Yeah. So the reason you're talking to people that are licensed like 2008 a lot of the time, it's because those are the people that made it out of a crappy market. Yeah. Probably the best time that you can get a license. Yeah. Like the people that make it over the next two years right now, those are gonna be your agents for the next 20 years. Yeah. There's a lot that aren't going to make it out. Yeah. Well, you're building the fundamentals of uh, how to actually put together a good business right now. Got to right. be a business right now. Yeah. Right? Like the last, n not nine months, previous two years to that was hype. Yeah. It was all hype. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of people making a lot of money that shouldn't have. Right? Or they capitalized. I guess I shouldn't say shouldn't have. You capitalized on something that was like coming to you no matter what. Yeah. And the next three, four, five years, it's gonna be a different thing. Yeah, totally. Right. So what I know like, yeah, I, so you've actually, you know what? Let's talk about your YouTube, man. Cause I bet a lot of listeners wanna hear about that journey. You started a YouTube channel. Now it's at almost like 10,000 subs or something like that. 75, yeah. 75 Thanks for pumping it though. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. If, <laughs> go check out Steve Karish on YouTube after you subscribe to that Agent Kelly on YouTube. Absolutely. And, uh, but yeah, man, you've grown like a pretty big following. Like, I remember like when I started YouTube, everyone's like, oh yeah, I just, you're going to not do shit for like three years. Mm -hmm. But you grew like what, like in a year and a half? What's well, a recent thing, <clears throat> like since COVID basically. Yeah, but I started doing video updates to my clients in 2010. Oh, okay. Like a couple of them are still like totally different account, but they're still out there. Like I've never taken them down. I don't even know if I have the email address anymore to take them down. Yeah. And they're terrible, right? But I was always like doing something. And then I want to say it was 2017, 2018. I started kind of ramping them up a little bit again, but they were also terrible. Um, but I didn't take it serious till end of 20, beginning of 2021 probably. And when I saw the traction that it can get. So only two years. Basically two years from this point. So. January 1st, 2021, I was at 66 subscribers. Wow. So it can it can grow, um, but man, it's a big ball to start yeah. pushing uphill, right? Like you've done, like I don't know TikTok <clears throat> world, that's your world, right? Yeah. I don't know it, but I hear you can get big on it quickly. Yeah. Maybe, probably not now as much. It's a lot harder now. It, it was it was good for a short period of time, yeah. and now it's like a slow climb. Like I've just, we've done that. We just started cutting up my content and putting it into um, shorts. Yeah. And the crappy shorts that I put out a year ago are like reels. Instagram reels got way more views than yeah. anything we're putting out now, and the content's way better now. Yeah. Right? So you gotta, but it's a big, uh, I think a lot of people get deterred by it because uh, it's a lot of work. It's a big barrier to entry to get into yeah. YouTube. And I mean, like, even when you look at our market, there's like what, like five realtors who have a following on YouTube in there's, our market? There's a lot, but I took a different approach. 
And this is kind of, you weren't privy, we had a conversation beforehand, but like, that's why I was like, if you're doing stuff for yours, like if, if it's Abbotsford, it needs to be Abbotsford. Yeah. So I made the point of like, it's Surrey. It's gotta be Surrey. Because I don't want to compete with the guys that are in Vancouver. Because yeah. one, I don't want to service that market. I'm not driving across a bridge, right? I commuted to Richmond plenty in my life and I don't want to do that now. Um, but I don't know that market. So it was like, how am I going to do this Surrey business? And it's such a cool tool that I didn't realize was possible when, previously. When you said it grew fast, was it like, was it a couple of videos that like made a substantial amount of subscribers come in or was it like just... My number one to... video probably has <clears throat> a good weight of like... 2,000 couple... subscribers <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. So like if you can hit one of those, yeah. you're going to crush it. But no, it's usually like... 20, 30 subscribers per video. Okay, yeah. Right? But there's so many little tips and tricks you can do to, like, get the ball rolling in the beginning. At the, at the very beginning, man, I was taking my YouTube link, putting it on Facebook, and then paying for it to be seen on Facebook. You want to talk about negativity? You want to talk oh, about people yeah. crapping on you? Oh, yeah. Put it out there to 65-year-old Bettys that are out there just crapping on whatever the real estate market's doing today, man. It's just... Well, you know, you are the reason why prices went up. <clears throat> I am. You are, right? Yep. But I'm you're also. not the reason why they went down. Yeah. So. <laughs> I am definitely that, too. Well, it depends. If you have the listing appointment that I had yesterday, I'm the problem there, too, right? Right. So, you know, you're always the bad guy, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, that is this industry. We're never going to get around that. Yeah. Right. Telling yeah. people things they don't want to hear. Yeah, it's a lot of bad news right now, I'm finding most of the time. I never really get to give too much good news out to people these days, I find. Like, a lot of listing appointments I go to, even with even with buyers, man. Like, I'm finding, like, buyers, they think they have so much time, right? And if it's a well-priced product, yeah. they don't. They get time for the crappy ones. Yeah, yeah. right? I would have been better off turning off my phone yesterday with the interest rate hike. Really? Yeah. Is it like a? It's you a big, get it's a big beat thing up now. Um, not necessarily beat up. Just a lot of people like like be like, what do I do? Like like how how can you like maybe help my situation a bit? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, there's like not much to do now. Mm -hmm. Like These they are they lock mortgages. in and they go into a higher rate than what they're already paying and they're already stressed right now, um, or they pay a substantial penalty, go into a lower fixed rate, and then rates drop in a year and they're they're screwed again. Like. It's really hard to advise on what to do with that because there's not really many great options. But like everyone, as soon as there's a rate hike, it's like probably 50 incoming calls a day. From existing? From existing or like not even- They already have a mortgage not or even, just buyers? There are more so people with mortgages already that right. their payment's been going up. Um, not even my clients sometimes, sometimes it's just other people's clients that see me on social media that start calling me because they want some advice. Yeah. and. In their mind, they think that their mortgage broker at the time screwed them over for putting them in a, in a variable, but it's just kind of I, I heard in anyone's uh, control. Dustin Woodhouse, he's like one of the biggest mortgage yep. brokers. Yeah, you he's, know, he's, he like runs he a brokerage. He has a motto team. about variable. Like, yeah, he said, uh, what did he say? He was like, he was like, telling your clients to go variable was the right call. Uh, because and he, he equated it to like the Seattle Seahawks not running the ball. Mm -hmm. He was like, the play they ran what had a ninety. At a hundred percent success rate that season, yeah. it didn't fail once. Yeah. But the one time it does fail is the big L. Yeah. It's when you're up against Bill Belichick. Yeah. Well, yeah. His, his saying is that uh, life is variable, so your mortgage should be too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he's a big talker. He has three books um, that he wrote about being a broker and how to be a better broker. Um, they're they're great books. They actually made me read those books when I first joined my brokers. They were like a requirement. They're like, go read these first before we actually set everything up for you. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Went and read them. Honestly, really good advice in all of them. It's a lot about like retaining clients and actually like helping people instead of just doing like transactional deals. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, he he really pumps the variables, and a lot of brokers go off his advice too because he actually is very intelligent with that kind of stuff. And now a lot of brokers are being bit, not even because it was necessarily the wrong choice. But just it's like just they how had it a works. crappy crystal ball. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's what it comes down to. You like here's yeah. my thing. Like, I'm chicken, man. I'm going fixed every time. Right? Like, I'm not going variable on nothing. I did get a bit of a, a HELOC at one point because I wanted access to capital, yeah. but I haven't really used it, right? Um 
I don't know. It's it's a philosophy thing, and yeah. I don't think there's enough for someone in your position. I, I never having done your position, I would assume that the conversation needs to be a lot around like what is your risk tolerance. Yes, it, it, it's very person by person. But I can. So and then what does the buyer do? Buyer goes or client. Well, um, yeah, but what's the lowest rate right now? And it's like <laughs> you're not listening, man. Like, what if this goes up? Oh, it probably won't go up. Yeah, like like realistically, my job's not to choose their product for them. It's to just explain the pros and cons of each one and say which one do you think suits you, you best. Yeah. And a lot of the time, like I can go into a meeting and tell right away this person's going to be a fixed rate person. There's no convincing this person to go variable. I'm not going to end up tr- possibly losing this client over trying to convince them to go variable when I can tell right away they're a fixed rate person just yeah. by how they're talking and yeah. how they seem. So. Like imagine being a broker in like September 2021 and telling people like, oh yeah, rates are going to go up 4.25% next yeah. year. <laughs> like, Scotiabank what? put out the craziest one was two full points. So whatever, eight quarter point hikes over two years. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we blew that out by one and a half times or two and a half times within It was like two months. rate hikes. Not only that, the like... governor of Bank of Canada went on, went on an in on camera basically said i promise you rates will stay low yeah. in for 2023 yeah, yeah where they missed the ball on that is i mean it just probably should have been yeah september yeah right but then if you remember i don't want to get you guys uh, no views so i won't remember i won't talk about the variant that came out at that time but that shut everything back down again yeah. so everybody was like hands off again so it just became a problem i remember doing a video in january of last year saying can we please just do something like can we not do another hold yeah. and they did another hold yeah it's like and then when you look at the numbers the market actually peaked in most places in average price in february last year yeah so a month before the rate hike came in so we were already at a critical we, mass we were already at the peak before the rate hike we even were. came in yeah, yeah. And then they no they should have been raising them slowly in like yeah summer yeah. 2021 they should have started that rate hike cycle but yeah. I don't know what the thought process It's interesting was. that you said, um, you know, it's it's up to you to just explain and then have your clients. Yeah, pick. I can give my recommendation, but it's yeah. never like, it's like, this is what you need to get. There, This is what I think you should get. It's like, this is what I kind of recommend based on this stuff, but it's your choice. Like, the, the number one increase in my business measurable to a decision I made was when I stopped trying to influence my clients into purchasing what I would purchase. Yeah. Right? It was probably 2013, 2014. And as soon as I said, oh, wait, Steve, you're not buying a house for you. They're buying a house for them. Now, I'm going to tell them if I think it's a piece yeah. of crap. But there's lots of people that like to buy pieces of crap. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, this is not, I, I would not recommend this. Yeah, but I want the house. What am I going to do? Tell you you're living your life wrong? And then as soon as you can get out of the way and just give them the options and then let them make the, like, people have to have decisions over their own, or power yeah. over their own decisions. And if you can remove that and just make sure that you gave them all of the information, then when they come back down the road, it's it's the choice they've made. Not only that, but you have to have, you get fewer hard conversations because people aren't gonna come back to you all pissed off because they know that they were the ones that chose it. Yeah. And you were truthful in everything you said. Everything you said still is, is fact. Like it didn't change just because rates went up. Yeah. You explained that could happen. You just have you just have less people that could possibly be angry at you, which will mean you're still getting those referrals. And man, if you're gonna be in this business, people can be angry at you. Yeah, it's just the way it is. You, get, it you gotta is. get a thick skin. Yeah, real quick. Like when you when you have your one of your best friends go silent for three months, and you find out they listed with somebody else, <laughs> and it, like, yeah, nothing hurts worse and that's something you can't really impress upon people that are not in the industry they're like yeah whatever dick realtors whatever you just guys are in it for the money or whatever you don't you can't imagine the emotions i know you guys i don't know if you guys have gone I've through had it a already couple friends go yeah. through it where they just go straight to the bank but yeah and or have, i don't know if you had this yet but get ready for it have you had anybody do their full approval with you and then switch to the bank after the subject removal i've not friends but i've had people do that yeah. yes so when i friend from like high school does that to you yeah then you're gonna cry <laughs> and that's that's part of you know and then you realize you know what they're just doing what they probably feel is the best decision yeah. for them and it's nothing against you and they're probably still gonna invite you to barbecues and you're gonna go there and you'll be like 
oh, this is a nice house. I wish I could have helped you with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, life goes on, man, and you got you to gotta push it I aside. Know. We were just talking about that on the last podcast. Like the emotional – what's the word I'm looking for? The emotional – I don't know. I'm toll. losing. Yeah, emotional toll, but not even the. What's the discipline? The emotional yeah. discipline you have to have to do this job. Like the threshold is just like, like I was saying, like I came from plumbing where physically hard. Like there were nights where I literally had worked 27 hours straight, and I'm crying in the back of my mm. van at three in the morning, right? <laughs> but I would still take that over the emotional toll that this job can take on you sometimes. Really? Well, 100. percent I mean, I had transactions like. Um, closings that were long closings before rates went up and I didn't sleep for like three months because mm-hmm. I was like I have no idea how this client's going to close mm-hmm. on this right like that takes an emotional toll on you yeah. right so you had like you met like clients off of TikTok yeah and then how do you what do you sell them whatever they want hey you want to build so some- is it like you're meeting up for like a buyer's meeting going looking at resale or is it like pre-sale like lineup pre-sales or most of my clients have been pre-sale okay uh, most of my clients are investors and that's who i like to work with mm-hmm. uh most um but yeah anything like if it's resale i'm just like they already know me when they call me mm-hmm. right so i don't i can skip the let's sit down for coffee most of the time it's just like hey what do you want oh yeah you want this all right let's go check it out i'll schedule this blah 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 and i just meet them at the showing right so are you terrified for closings in 2025 <sighs> yeah I would be well, like i don't really do pre-sale i've got a couple that are like there and it's like okay they're still making sense but like i know when you do pre-sale for the most part i haven't done a lot it's usually like you don't have the same rapport and knowledge as if you're working with like a buyer that's, you know, working with your mortgage broker and all those things. So, and let's face it, there's a lot of people that were counting on property values only going up and they're counting on flipping and now the flipping taxes are coming in. Like the government's changing the deck so quick that you can't keep up. Yeah. Like I would be like, I mean, it's there would definitely be, be sleepless nights is what I'm saying. It's going to be a mess for sure, I think. But yeah. here's the thing, right? Anyone who bought a pre-sale with me, I told them all the risks. I yeah. said, hey, I 100. First off, don't ever buy a pre-sale to flip. That's the Never. first thing. Never. Never. What? This camera? Never buy a pre-sale to flip. Thank Never. You. Right? So first thing, that's what I tell all my clients right away. And that's usually the first question that I get asked. Yeah. Right? Hey, Yes, you can flip a pre-sale. Do not buy this with the intention of flipping yeah. it. Buy it with the intention that you're going to get a mortgage and complete. And if the scenario comes up where you're up 50 grand, 60 grand, then yes, let's flip it, right? But that's not the number one priority when buying a pre-sale, right? Secondly, if you're going to buy this, go get a firm approval from RBC. RBC. Five years. Yeah, yeah. They will literally, you lose your job, you know, you become addicted to drugs and live on the street. They will close for you. They will give you the yeah. loan. Unfortunately, I have clients who did not take my advice and didn't go get that approval because they just mm-hmm. thought, you know, whatever, I'll just put up more cash or whatever they thought, right? So that's my only concern is I have a few clients that didn't take that advice and we'll see what happens, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, I did my job properly right so there's not much else i can do about it yeah like sometimes this is the first year that we had 2022 was the first year we had deals not close oh really yeah never before have we had a deal not close we've had a couple late Mm -hmm. you know uh bank didn't get ids or something so they like won't fund the mortgage or whatever (laughs) something stupid um but this time we actually had a couple that did not close and we had to resell the property for hundreds of thousands less never seen that happen before and you're on the listing side yeah Oh yeah, we've never had a buyer not complete. Like our buyers are pretty tight. Yeah. Uh, I think most agents would be shocked to see the steps that we go through in advance of working with a buyer, right? Because most people are like, I just want a buyer right now. Like especially right now, <laughs> you just want somebody who's ready to rock. Yeah. And it's like, nope. We're I usually have like a two-hour buyer presentation. Last night was an hour and forty-five minutes, right? And then it's proper pre-approvals, like everything's going. And now on the listing side, I'm getting offers coming in and it's like 21 day conditions. And I'm like, I don't care how good your offer is. I don't care if it's over asking. I'm not sitting on your 21 day conditions because you're not going to firm up because yeah. you haven't spoken to the bank yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like you have, you're not yeah. a good buyer. So, and if I do go, do 21 day conditions and accept it, the guy at RBC or wherever that goes to the bottom of the list, we're going to we're gonna prove that yeah. 17 days from now. We're not gonna prove it right now. 
Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's I don't even know they're what, pretty, what ramble pretty, about, like but. like when it comes to subject removals, like they'll leave it till the last day. The last if you day. have a five day subject removal. Yeah. You're going to hear your answer on the fifth day. Yeah. <laughs> and if you I got three days, it, you're probably going to get it in three days. I could submit it on like the night of receiving it. And then so they have it first thing in the morning and I probably won't get it like fully settled. Like some banks do what's called a conditional approval. So it's an approval, but then it's like, oh, we still need to review your documents. But then you, like they won't actually do like that full firm approval until like the last day. They leave it till the last day because they got other ones that are closing that day that they need to get done. So mm-hmm. if you have a big big subject removal period they're leaving it till the end yeah totally um i got a question for you guys how long have you guys been doing business a couple years about two years yeah just about two so uh i've been thinking about this a lot lately because i think it may come um i would assume most people that are newer to the business are massive social plays right it's the only way to get out there unless you're gonna go door knocking or whatever yeah so you know you're doing tiktok or whatever you're doing tiktok too yeah TikTok too. That's not like not as much. Version. Actually, he does a actually, lot more. I actually, actually met, met him over TikTok. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah when yeah. I first started. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. But I have had deals come in through TikTok brokering. Like, so we're all under BCFSA now. Yeah. yeah. And you're aware that security traders are allowed to say zero online social media. So we are security traders. Then. No, we're not security traders. So, um, uh, the guy that helps you, your financial advisor. Right, stocks, okay. whatever. They can't say nothing. Yeah. What happens to your guys' business right now if the BCFSA steps in and says, "That's it, realtors, no more social media." No more social media in general. You mean like period. Instagram? Period. 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 You are not allowed to say anything. You can advertise it just listed, just sold. You can advertise well, like, today's well, rate. T- tips. No, I guess not because that's advice. Financial right? advice. <laughs> this is something that could come down. Can I still can I still present myself as a broker? Like I still am listed as a broker. Like I have broker in my bio and stuff like that. Because a lot of mine is just direct messaging with people over Instagram and stuff. I think you would be restricted. <clears throat> I think if they do this, I don't. I'm not sure it's going to happen anytime soon, or if it, if it is feasible. But if they do it, what does your business look like if you cannot do what I do? Right. If you cannot comment on a news story, uh, if you cannot say, mm-hmm. hey here's how a property disclosure statement works. And if you have questions about that or want to list your property, book a call. It it would definitely be tough, but a lot of it now is starting to transition into referrals. Like the last couple months hasn't really been any from social media. I just keep up with it anyways because I need to. But it's mainly been like past client referrals or realtor referrals or just family like Sphere mentioning my name when they hear someone. So I I, I think it would be tough but I think it would I would still last through it if they implemented that. Yeah, yeah, something to consider. I mean, it would just suck. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> like I'm, I'm passionate about you know posting on social media. Like, I almost enjoy that more than selling real estate. Like, yeah. I, I I love selling real estate. I'm super passionate about that. That's why I got into this. But I found a new passion in social media and yeah. just understanding how it works and the philosophy and everything. So yeah, I mean, that would suck. <laughs> Hands down. That's all I that can say. Suck. I it would suck. find a way around it, but that would suck. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's where I think a lot of people need to, to focus. Cause I don't think like YouTube has become a significant portion of my business, but you can't just rely on that. No. Right. There's gotta be so much more in your business. So it's, it's something that I don't think anybody has on the radar at all. And so go, with the government regulations news. that are going on, man, they're cracking down on everything, right? Like what your choice is for you to do your business your way or own your property your way, we're taking that away, right? Yeah. They're taking it all away. They're taking away the way you can sell your property. They're taking away what the way you, you can advertise. They're taking away everything because they can't actually fix the problem, which is you got to build more houses or stop immigration. Nobody wants to stop immigration. Nobody can build houses fast enough. So they have to go, okay, well, what are these other things? It's only a matter of time, I think, before there's... Stricter rules behind everything. Maybe. Yeah, that would suck, man. I could see it. Yeah. 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 So you, you, you got to hit like, all the avenues. you got to be a much more... Well, SE, uh, I wouldn't ever spend a penny on SEO. No, not spend it. I would just... I, 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 I get actually quite a few leads, and I've had a couple closings in the last six months just from being on the first page of Google for my 
website really? on the well for so if Langley Mortgage Broker yeah organically out on the top link but then also in the top three of like the maps businesses mm -hmm. and the traffic is roughly about 120 people to my website each month and out of that I get maybe six or seven people that actually fill out the form oh wow that's, good. that's then, really good yeah so it actually does equate to quite a bit and it's one thing that's free it'll always be free and it'll always be there yeah and no one's passing me because I'm constantly tweaking it because I know how to do it so <laughs> well I know in in real estate like if you want to pay to get to the oh top, oh it's so expensive like <laughs> google ads for brokers it's like 13 bucks a click like there's guys in calgary broker. that are more closer to like, they're kind of work the same way the states markets yeah. do and they're like hundreds of thousands of dollars per month to, that's crazy to stay at yeah. the top right and then what's their return this is why i like youtube so much their return is here's a thousand leads yeah, this exactly. week dial them kids right like they got a sweatshop in the yeah. back dial them and by the way your best return is like 0 0.05 percent yeah no it's it's definitely that not sucks. ideal yeah. when you're doing paid ads um unless they're giving you at least like a three or four x return it's not ideal and that's why i was stoked that you're starting like the youtube stuff because those people are like hey uh i want to buy a house in surrey and you seem like you know what you're talking about and what's going it. on yeah right like have you had that Experience. Oh, that's pretty much all my clients I work with. Yeah. Like it r cuts out that entire process of getting them to trust me. Yeah. And it, it literally, it's like they're at the end of the You don't have to and... sell them on using you. It's no. Just, sorry. Do you think they're going to be different? Because you're like closer to the beginning of your journey on YouTube. So do you think they're going to be different? Or have you noticed a difference between the TikTok ones and the YouTube ones? I've only gotten a couple off YouTube. And so far... Yeah, like, like the people that call me on TikTok are a bit different. Like when I, whenever I answer, whenever I answer the phone, they'll be like laughing already. They'll be like, oh. <laughs> "Hey Kelly, what's going on, man?" They're like, "Cause they've been watching my, cause I, I post stupid stuff on TikTok, yeah. right?" Whereas on YouTube, it's like kind of more serious. It's more informational. So like the couple leads I've gotten from YouTube haven't been laughing when I open when I when I answer my phone. It's just yeah. it's just a serious conversation about buying a home, right? But. Uh, I'd say, you know, people on YouTube are probably more analytical. Um, you're just going to find yeah. more analytical who are, yeah. like, actually taking the time to research what they're going to do before they do it, right? Yeah. So um, that's what I would say. Yeah, that's totally been the case. Like, they know what they're doing, and they're doing their research. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. I couldn't ever – I mean, personally, TikTok, I just don't want the Chinese Communist Party connected to my phone, so that's why I cut it <laughs> off, right? But – um, it's also just not my age. Like, I'm 42, yeah. right? So it's not really my demo. You'd be surprised that all the clients that have got off TikTok have all been in their, at least, at least older than 35. Yeah. Most of yeah. them in their 40s. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And there's been, like, probably at least 15 to 20 of them since I started going on there. Here's a fun fact. Through. So it's crazy. There's not, they're not, like, not a single one has been younger than 30. Mm -hmm. No, uh, the age is, TikTok is growing uh, in the age range 44, 35 to 54, faster than Facebook did in like 2010. Yeah. 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 So the, the, I guess, aging demographic is largely contributing to TikTok. I was growth. listening to a bunch of guys that like out of the States that are doing big back into Facebook. Because if you go into Facebook and you have over 10,000 subscribers, you can actually make better money than YouTube. On Facebook. On Facebook. But you need 10,000 subscribers to get monetized. On Facebook. Yeah. But you need 10,000 subscribers. I don't think I've gained a subscriber on my Facebook page in 10 so years. Like your, you say, <laughs> so your, your business Facebook page? Like yeah, your, like... Because I hate how Facebook, you have like a profile page and you have to have like a business page separately. I, you can't just like make it yeah, all the yeah, same thing. It's yeah, so yeah, annoying. Yeah. But like when you can monetize. Okay. Uh, and in certain countries, like Mr. Beast, I think even, um, and a bunch of other guys are like in India. Yeah. It's Facebook is bigger than everything else combined. So they run ads on there and they just make crazy amounts of money. Now that's obviously content. Yeah. It's not what we're trying to do. Like when I do a video, I'm doing this to meet people that want to buy real estate in Surrey. Yeah. Right. Like that's my purpose. Um, I, I want to provide good information and then I want to meet people. I don't want to pretend that I'm one of these guys that's just out there going, oh, I'm just here to provide you all the information and take it for free. No, I'm looking for leads. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, we've almost victim or uh, demonized business yeah. in like, oh, it's not okay for you to go and get business. No, we shouldn't take that approach, right? Yeah. Like, we should all be hustling and getting business. And that's, that's why I have that there. Um, but Facebook, man, I don't know. 
I, even Instagram, I can't stand. I'm too yeah. old for it. Instagram is tough. Man. I I like Instagram. I can't stand Facebook. Yeah. I just hate the whole factor to growing two separate pages. I grew, I had a pro, people f- friends with me on my personal one. As soon as I tried to run an ad, it accidentally got flagged or whatever. That account's banned forever. So I had to create a new <laughs> Facebook really? page. So it's like it's such a pain. And now you can't even like, for instance, with with Facebook, like three or four years ago, I would try and run an ad. For a listing, and yeah. it's like I want to run the ad for the listing. Oh, you Here. can't narrow it down. You can't narrow it's it down anymore. Miles. That's which is disc- a long way. Yeah, it's too. it's discrimination. I'm like, it's a 55 plus complex. What do I need to advertise it to 13 year olds for? No, yeah. sorry, that's discrimination. It's like, oh jeez. So you're kind of brutal. Hooped. I just find the Facebook UI is. I'm actually using Facebook again. Um, I actually post on the reels. Yeah. And they get decent reach. I'll say like. But those just, just go from your Instagram over, right? No, you. Don't, for I some don't reason, you they don't. You can't actually post the reels on Facebook unless you actually post them on Facebook. You have to actually. But you can go set. And post you can them. set it up where like your posts on Instagram automatically post on Facebook. Oh, I'm thinking of stories. And, if, and if you yeah. make a if you make a reel on Instagram, I think it just like makes a normal post of that video. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are almost talking to the equivalent of like your parents to <laughs> with me with social media, man. Because I figured out YouTube, but the rest of it. Well, YouTube's by far the hardest one, that's for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about the market, man. Where, what's your prediction for 2023? Where do you think it's going? Where do I think it's going? I love there's uh, one particular uh, YouTube commenter who is banned from my channel, by the way, um, mostly for name calling. And that particular individual always says, this won't end well. And my, uh, so, so if you know who that is, you know who that is because it's every single comment. Um, and I, my answer to that is it's not going to end, right? Unless we get hit by a comment tomorrow. Like there's no end to the market. It's going to continue. We're going to go through a crappy time. This year, there's not going to be very many sales. There's way too many agents. There's way too many people in the, in the business. And it's going to stink for a while. And that's why I'm saying if you guys make it through, you guys are going to be the guys that crush it in four or five, six years from now. If you can hold your license for two more years. And this is where a lot of people, I'm, I'm having meetings with people that are like, I'm giving up my license. Really? Yeah. Is it Bill Ferguson? I know like three brokers that just left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do know people that are leaving, I knew. Right? I know people. He's pretty good at this. He knows exactly. Is he on your I, channel I, yet yeah, or no? Yeah, of course he is. Yeah. I see him every you, hey, listen, you are not a realtor on social media. Bill Ferguson is the stamp of approval. You know what? I think that guy actually, if you watch his interview, he's a pretty smart dude. I don't want to talk about specific people, but um, I just can't understand, like, na- like I said, name calling. It's it's just it just reduces your argument down to to stupidity. Yeah, right? I mean, I talk to him. He's, he's he's a nice guy. Like he's nice to me when I talk to him. I think he's a yeah. I mean, I think probably all of us need to get out from behind the computer a little more because I do think like if you're going to have a conversation like this with somebody like that, they're not going to say terrible things to your face, but yeah. they're sure going to type it. Yeah. Well, I tried to get him on the podcast, but he, it's better than he someone just having something out no. for you. And every reel I posted the last like two months, this one guy just always comments a bunch of clown emojis, one one after yeah. another, yeah. just yeah. clown emojis, and I delete them and they just keep rolling in. I'm like, <laughs> don't you have anything better to do? No. Yeah. No, man. It's uh, yeah. Pardon the interruption, guys. This podcast is sponsored by Stonehouse Realty. Stonehouse Realty has one-on-one coaching with top producers every Friday. We have training at least three times a week. If you look at the January training schedule as of 2023, it's crazy. There's like two trainings a day every day. So if you're a new agent looking to make a change or anybody looking to get their real estate license, you can reach right out to us, schedule an appointment, and we'll get you in. Stonehouse Realty, experience the difference. So... Where do, I, where do I think the market's going? Yeah. Um, I mean, we're going to see decline. Uh, I think we're going to see decline until six months after we don't see another rate hike. Probably the way it's going to go. Yeah. And um, that is is what it is, right? That is the marketplace. So the problem is then sellers right now, oh, I'm going to wait till the market comes back. And I'm like, cool. Our closest comparison right now is... 1981, 82. So 81, everything doubled in price. 82, everything came back right back down. And then 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, flat. Yeah. 
and you didn't then you saw a spike again 88 89 you might are you prepared to hold on to that property for that long maybe if you are great but it's, it's going to come back it's going to be a, the right amount of time um could that potentially come back a lot faster there's a real good chance it can so people don't want to buy in the market right now because it's a bad market and prices are going down. People don't want to buy an asset that's worth less the day they move in than the day uh, that they bought it, yeah. that they signed the paperwork. They have no problem paying a hundred grand over if they think they can sell more if for more the day they move in. Mm -hmm. So um, that is probably a version of stupidity, right? Like yeah. it's it's just not forward thinking. It's thinking okay in ninety days as opposed to. I mean, I've owned my house for ten years, right? I paid seven hundred one for my house. At the peak, it was two million bucks. Right now, it's probably one point six. So did I lose four hundred? Yeah, but, but no, I didn't lose four hundred, right? I've just made like nine hundred. I can't even do the math. Nine hundred grand on that thing. I just didn't top out at the peak. Right. At the peak. Yeah. yeah. So, like, unless you're going to be a perfect market timer, last time I checked, no one is. nobody's really good at that. Yeah. Right? So, anybody that wants to buy this year, five-year plan, same as I've told everybody. This is actually why I steer people away from pre-sales, because of things like this. Right? We have a kind of a mutual friend we spoke about earlier. We won't name him here. But, um, you know, I, I talked to him about pre-sales because he was involved in, in pre-sales back in, like, 06, 07 and then had properties and it was tough to get out of those properties for many years for a decade yeah so you got to be prepared yeah and then the crazy thing is if you hold on to those for two more years past the even out point they're worth double right so all of the commenters on youtube or probably tiktok too just all talk about doom and gloom That's all it is. and um you know the right time to buy like they're geniuses oh, yeah. like they can figure it out you know the right time to buy was? When you can afford it. Ten years ago? It's when you can afford it. Right? Like, the right time to buy is buy and stay in and don't get out. Yeah. Um, we are a different market. You have to acknowledge that we're a different marketplace. Toronto and Vancouver are a different marketplace than a lot of places. We are a growth market. And the people I'm speaking to, most of them being permanent residents now or applying for permanent residence, they are not interested in moving to Calgary. They're not interested in moving to Winnipeg, right? They're going to be in the GTA. They're going to be in Greater Vancouver. And the people that live here, the NIMBYs that are here, the not-in-my-backyard people that are here are going to have to get used to Vancouver has graduated from being a fishing village in the 1960s to we had Expo and then we had the Olympics. We're a big yeah. boy city now. International metropolitan We are an international now. market now. Yeah. And... I don't know if you, like I have an uncle that was looking at property and I'll probably, I'm half lying probably when I tell this story because I don't really know the details. I was younger when he told it to me, but he, uh, he moved to Hong Kong for 20 years. And when he moved to Hong Kong, he was looking at properties there. Apartments were $2 million in 1997. So he bought a $250,000 apartment in downtown Vancouver, right? And then bought more properties in Vancouver because he couldn't yeah. afford Hong Kong in 1997. It was 10 times the value. Yeah. International city. Yeah. Right. That's and where we're since going. then, since then, Vancouver has graduated. And now where I am out mm -hmm. in the burbs, it's like, I just get the residuals of that. Right. Yeah. Because we don't have the real money. We got the, yeah. the leverage money. I think it's like, like, like you were saying, people don't want to buy an asset and then it goes down in value right after. Yeah. Right. So um, do you, what do you think? 5%, 10% more this year? 20% more? Oh, man. I mean, it's like, it's literally a three-year-old's guess is as good as mine, right? But I'm going to say, I'm going to say like 6%, something like that, mm -hmm. I think is a, a decent guess. What do you think? Who knows? In the Valley? In, this, in, in, in that, Vancouver, crazy, it's not though? going down more Look at than Abbotsford like, right now. Like, your primary market's Abbotsford, right? Yeah. You live in Abbotsford? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you can get a... Eight hundred thousand dollar house in Abbotsford up to one point three really really quickly. Yeah, right, and it can come down just as quick. <laughs> yeah, just as but rough. you can't get a three and a half million dollar house on anywhere in Vancouver up to four and a half million dollars. It's really hard to do. Yeah, right. So 
I think we're seeing a, a balance of return to normal where people value being closer to the cities, obviously. Yeah. Um, and that's probably the way it should have been. Like if, when I got in the business, it was like, if I can move two cities over, put 150 grand in my pocket and be happy. Well, now 150 grand ain't enough, right? You can't do much with it. Yeah. And there was no, for two years, there was no increase in value or increase in buying power the further out you went really mm -hmm. right at one point Chilliwack was really close to Surrey really Surrey wasn't that far off like when you look at a 1.8 million dollar home a year ago in Surrey yeah it was 4,000 square feet and maybe it had a basement suite or whatever but you could still get a detached home now 1960s you know Vancouver special in Vancouver but you could still for 1.8 million on the east side of Vancouver right so you could still do detached in Vancouver for the same price as you could do detached in uh, in Surrey. Well, there should be a big spread there, right? Vancouver should be a lot more expensive. Yeah. It should be hard to own detached property in Vancouver. And um, I think we're just re returning to that balance a little bit, mm. right? So I agree. But if I, I had to guess, I'll say 5% for sure. Yeah. Do I think we'll get it back? We could get it back in two years. We could get it back in seven. Yeah. Right. Who knows? Right? Where are you going to live in the meantime? Last time I checked, roofs are pretty cool, right? It's yeah. pretty cool to sleep inside. So, and yeah. then I don't know what rents are doing. Do you think rents are softening right now? I think they're going to experience like a, a dip and soften, but I think they're going to start going back up again. Yeah. I, I mean, that's I historically what, what they've done. Is it? I don't yeah. pay any attention to rents because I don't want anything to do with it, but I do have my own rentals. So yeah. it's like, yeah, planning for the future on that's kind of... I think we we saw, like like you were saying, how we peaked before they even hiked rates, right? Rental rates got to a point where we experienced fatigue, and then they dropped off a bit. But the thing is, we have so much immigration coming here. People have stopped building, so on and so forth. And I think that will rebound be long before prices do and start going back up. Yeah, I don't know. It's... The demand is there. Like, there's no shortage from what I'm seeing. Is there, like, a million people out behind us? Yeah. Um, the demand is there and long-term. For instance, I bought a condo two years ago. Uh, it went up within a year of, like, 35%, 40%. Should I have sold it? Looking back, yeah. yeah. Uh, am I going to be happier that I didn't sell that in 20 years when I own that property? Yeah. Yeah. That's my retirement, right? Yeah. That's either my retirement or that's my kid's uh, future, home. future future into the market, right? If I liquidate it and help my kids out or something, which is probably something we're going to have to do, yeah, right? And here's the, here's this <clears throat> may get me in shit, so be prepared for it. I think that that is something that as Canadians, we have too much pride over, right? We had this fairy tale time of after the war until... 2000 of where everybody had a white picket fence 7,000 square foot lot 1,000 square foot to 3,000 square foot home every that wasn't how most of the world works most of the time so we now have to think about things like generational wealth right look at all the folks coming over here from other countries they think about those yeah. things it's all they think about and we are probably immature in our way of thinking about real estate and moving forward and that's going to really suck because I'm going to be hard on my girls to like buy property and I'm not going to I don't want to help them out I'm probably going to have to swallow my pride at one point yeah right I want them to do it on their own so they respect mm -hmm. it and then when I die they can have a little money that's left over but probably probably going to have to yeah. help them out right yeah going to have to stop being stubborn with that might, might, <laughs> might be hard to do. <laughs> I think it's like, you know, I feel I was, like we should be happier right now. Like this is getting intense. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's good podcast uh, conversation right there. There's a short, get it in there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny. Like when you look back at the asset value of like any asset 20 years ago, it's hilarious how cheap it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like today, everyone's talking like, oh, the market's going to go down like another 20% or whatever, right? So let's just say that the price is a million bucks and it goes down 20%, right? If we, if we look at like 
2000 or like 1998 or whatever when a detached house was probably like 180 grand in Surrey, mm-hmm. right? And then the value goes down 20%. Okay, it just dropped like 35,000 bucks, right? 20 years later, who would care that their house went down 35 grand 20 years ago? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like the percentages we're, we're talking about where the market could come down could very well be absolutely peanuts yeah. in 20 years. But it's like that thing that they say about like goal setting, Yeah. right? Everybody overestimates what they're going to do in a year and underestimates what they're going to do in five years. So everybody is very short-sighted. Everybody can only see the transaction from, you know, for instance, when I moved into my house, it was my wife and I, and that was it. Well, there's four of us now. And life changed a whole lot from then to now. People can't picture that. Mm -hmm. They can't. And like, there's a lot of people that are like, ah, you know, yeah, we got one kid, so we want to buy a two bedroom. I'm like, do you guys sleep in the same bed? You know what happens if a married couple sleeps in the same bed for a certain amount of time? Usually another kid pops out, right? (laughs) So like, you better plan for these things than people can't. People are really short-sighted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like, that just goes back to like, you know, people, I think what it comes down to is people don't want to feel stupid, right? So when you buy an asset and then it goes down by the time you move in, yeah, like, you they don't feel s- stupid. They don't save face with like their family. Or yeah. They, yeah. And then everyone tells them, oh, you're stupid for buying yeah, why that Why is he house. buying that market? Right. I Perfect example, not to still my own horn. better than the person saying listen, that that never bought in the first place and still. Listen to this. I, I'm talking to my buddy like two weeks ago. Tesla, everybody hated Tesla, right? Like it was, has been tanking. It was like 450 bucks. I hate Tesla. I don't even like Tesla, but I bought it at 150 I hear you like dollars. Dodge a lot. Though. I like, I like my Dodge <laughs> Ram. Okay. I like a gas guzzling machine, but I bought Tesla at 115 bucks simply because everybody else hates Tesla. And that's just how the markets go is when everybody hates something, you should probably buy it. Mm-hmm. Right. And my buddy's like, you did not buy Tesla shitty stock it's not even a real tech stock you're not going to make money on that for three years three weeks later tesla's at like 165 bucks right now it literally made like four years worth of gains in like the last three weeks Hmm. right right now everybody hates real estate and i was a dumbass for buying tesla but three weeks later now it's up whatever right i only bought that based on the sole narrative that nobody else wanted to buy it that's Warren Buffett's like whatever, one of his 10 commandments or whatever he calls them. He's like, buy stuff when nobody else wants it, mm-hmm. sell it when everybody else wants it. Right? Yeah, his quote's like, um, yeah, be fear, uh, be fearful when others are greedy, be greedy when others are fearful. That's the, the proper yeah. terminology yeah. to put yeah. so, it into. And that's true. So the plan should be, do you guys watch Graham Stephan? Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Like my goal is to get that guy on the on the <laughs> podcast one day, but... Um, it's just continue to buy in, hold it over time. That's it. Everything, right? Like, sure, you got to move, but I mean, we're lucky here in Vancouver. Things are still pretty liquid, right? Even if you lose a hundred grand, you can still sell it if you need to. Yeah. Things are pretty liquid. You can't do that in Grand Grand Prairie. Yeah. Right. You can be on the market for 18 months and still lose a hundred grand. Nobody wants a thing. Yeah. Right. So I think we're pretty lucky with where we are. Even like your recourse with real estate too is like, let's just say you buy in Vancouver, the vacancy rate is 0%. Okay. You bought a property. You're theoretically down a hundred grand on it. Even if it does nothing for 25 years, the tenant still paid off the entire balance of the home. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you have recourse no matter what happens, as long as you can pay the mortgage. People really forget about equity pay down. Yeah. Yeah. And equity pay down with other people's money is the best type of equity pay down. Yeah. Like that's the, that's what you want to do, man. It's it's costing me like with my investment properties, everybody's like, I want a cash flow so I can have like an extra 300 bucks. I'm like, first of all, you're going to have to come with 50% down if you want that. Good luck. You're not coming with 50% down, but you know they're paying down into a savings account for you every single day if you break even, and then you don't have tax problems. So some people don't even understand the concept of like not cash flowing and have to like top it up an extra two or three hundred bucks a month. That even though you're paying two three hundred bucks a month, you're still gaining yeah. over a thousand in return. Most, most of the investors down. we deal with are feeding yeah anywhere between two and six hundred a month. Yeah, and maybe that's instead of their RSP. Well, you're literally feeding a couple hundred in to get a thousand or more out, like in most when, cases. When I pay off my mortgage, our plan is remortgage and buy something else. Yeah. Because I can always have a mortgage payment, like I can afford it, 
So continually pay down something else. And ideally, there's a renter in there actually paying it down, mm-hmm. right? And it covers. That's the, yeah. the plan anyway. So Do you have investment you, properties? Yeah. 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 Has it been fun? You it's, got any terrible tenants yet? No. I, I, I had a flip that went wrong. I uh, actually ended up getting out of it in a profit but when i calculated it it was like a five percent return annually yeah. so i basically held like bell canada stock not for two bad. years not bad. i'll take it instead of a loss right and then i have uh, a property in windsor ontario that actually cash flows really nicely but the thing with cash flow man that nobody thinks about is it doesn't exist unless you're buying in a market that is a cash flow market right because here's the thing right i have a property that cash flows 800 bucks a month Three years after owning it, there's 19 grand in that bank account now because I've had repairs here and there and whatever, right? But all it takes is one repair, all that cash flow is gone. Mm-hmm. If I have to change the furnace, hot water tank's gonna come up, the roof goes, new drain tile, new flooring, new whatever, all the cash flow is gone. And yeah, it's not, so, not going up in value too much either. Well, it, actually, I got really lucky on that one because that wasn't supposed to be a cash flow market. It's just rents and home values. Where is that? Windsor, Ontario. Yeah. So when I bought it, only cash flowed like 300 bucks a month. Yeah. But their market there is like, you should look it up. It's like probably appreciated more than anywhere else in Canada in like mm-hmm. the last five years. But uh, like there are... Windsor, Essex, is that kind of the same? Exactly. Yeah, okay, I yeah. have a friend that yeah. works the area. Yeah. So like, but like if you buy in like markets like New Brunswick, you can get like a 10 unit apartment building for like, I don't know. I remember looking in there like eight units for like 200 grand or something like that. Like something ridiculous, right? But their market literally did nothing for like 20 years. That's a cash flow market. And right? then you get to deal with the $450 a month tenant. Yeah. But yeah. Exactly. Super fun. Right? Super so fun. what I say is like now going forward, I'm not going to buy in cash flow markets. I want to buy into a growing market where I'm going to see way more appreciation, yeah. right? And then later on, once I've built my net worth and whatever, then you move everything into the cash flow markets and you can live off the cash flow. Possibly. Right? Because that's the same idea in stocks. They tell you, you know, when you're young, put all your money into like growth stocks, build like a growth based portfolio. Once you age, you're like going into retirement. Then you put all of your money into like Pepsi and Coca Cola and just live off the dividends. Mm. Same idea in real estate. Right, so I probably won't be buying another cash flow. Hang property. on one sec. This is not financial advice. This is absolutely not financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I it's, am. With it's cash interesting. Flow. So, have you had any issues with like buying outside of the market? You know, because that's one thing I'm terrified of. I looked at Edmonton, and then I didn't buy in Edmonton. Ontario and BC are really forgiving. Uh, Alberta, not so much. So, like, it's pretty hard to make a mistake in Ontario unless you're buying in, like, Thunder Bay, right? But, like, yeah, Ed- Edmonton, you cannot think like a Vancouver, right? But I did a lot of research into Windsor, Ontario before I bought there. I spent months looking into it, and I was like, okay, there's no way I can lose here. Like, they were building a bridge to Detroit that was going to employ, like, a couple thousand people making 80 grand a year. Yeah. They were doing a $37 million mall renovation. They were doing, they were adding a whole nother section to their university they have there that brings in tech students. Detroit was actually not doing bad. Quicken Loans just came to Detroit. Um, they had all this economic activity going on. Yeah, their greenhouse game got a little, thanks to Justin Trudeau, got a little hyper there for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I was like, and, and here's the thing. When I bought that house, it was $150,000. It was worth like 520 at the top of the market because things there just got so stupid. Yeah. But I was like, okay, if my tenant doesn't pay this, the value goes down, everything is terrible and everything that could possibly go wrong happens, my mortgage payment is less than my buddy's brand new F-150 car payment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? It's 500 bucks a month and some of it's going to the principal. Yeah. Isn't so, it amazing people freak out about their mortgage payment, but they'll go buy a $120,000 yeah, pickup yes. truck and you're like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's $1,800 a month or something that you're paying. And they're like, oh, it's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Remember how you were freaking about that difference between uh, 5.29 and 5.39? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's like, to, even to add to that, right? Like people will go and buy a brand new $120,000 F-150, but they're scared to invest in real estate. It's like, dude, why don't you just buy something in like Saskatoon? It costs you the exact same like monthly payment. Right? But at least, you know, somebody else is paying it for you. Yeah, because they want the upside, right, with none of the risk. And yeah. That's not how it works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you own investment properties? 
No, no I'm pretty lucky. young still, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm still just trying to get in. I'm waiting for my. I, I need to, I need the recorded income of uh, self employment and all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, self employment is ra- fun. I'm ready to go once I file my taxes, so I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work, man. Like it's it's not passive, that's for sure. I know. Right. I I'm just started renting an office too. That's also pretty expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, more than more than I you like. You just shack up at one of these uh, Stonehouse offices. And I'm I'm at I'm well. That's why it's expensive because it's at a real estate brokerage. Oh, okay. So there is like lead potential there. Mm-hmm. Um, Those they, are the best way for mortgage brokers. Yeah, it's very expensive. Is it? Yeah. Really? <laughs> it was empty dust. You just come sit here and talk to us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hit him with the big three. Oh. Yeah. So. All where, right. do you, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, sitting here with you recording on the biggest Vancouver podcast <laughs> in regards to real estate that there is, man. Oh, hell yeah. That's where we should be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. But for real. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, probably doing more of this. Yeah. What about your YouTube channel? Where do you want to take Yeah, where do you want to take The goal that? with the YouTube channel is try and make it as big as possible that it can't... Um, go wrong at all in the next cycle yeah right because like I literally had to hire uh, just this last spring as a result of the amount of leads coming in so if it's two or three or four times that big when the next cycle goes um, that would be great Um, massive lead source but still to this day like last year that was 20 deals right so we're still 50, 60, 70 deals a year out of our database, and that's where everyone should focus, Yeah. right? So would I like to grow it? Yes, I've been a higher producer than I am now. I didn't find happiness there. So if I'm gonna grow, I'm gonna grow, uh, I was gonna say, it'd be cheesy if I said for the right reasons, but like, I'm gonna grow because I want to, grow something bigger and better and not just to do more deals right i've I've doubled uh i mean i think first year in the business chris and i together were like 55 transactions we grew it up to like 100 and a quarter at one point um no happiness there (laughs) just working too much so i am a firm believer once you get over seventy-five thousand dollars income there's no more happiness right bigger boat bigger car second wife right (laughs) whatever is there but there's no more happiness um that comes from having more money like i'm a debt pay down guy um you won't see me like i got a paid off seven-year-old truck and that thing is not going anywhere right so uh canyon drive a GMC. Is that a Chevy? GMC. GMC, yeah. Something that's weird that's happened. Hey, man, don't go there. You drive a Dodge. <laughs> uh, something weird that happened, actually. I didn't even realize this, but, like, my grandfather um, and my dad bought, like, GMC pickups or something. My, no, my grandfather bought, like, a Chevy. Um, but, like, I think the year I was born, my, my dad bought, like, a GMC truck. And then... It kind of that pattern kept happening in the family. Like my brother, when his son was born, they bought like a, a GMC pickup, and then the year after my daughter was born, I bought a GMC pickup, and like not by design. So it's in, it's in the blood. It's That's the hilarious. Blood. Yeah, it's a GMC dude. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, if you could go back to your early twenties, what would you do differently? Uh, I was on. Um, this kind of came out once uh, wrong, but. I was on Richard Robbins' podcast, and he asked me something similar. Like, what would you tell your 20-year-old self? And I was like, I'd be smart enough now not to I'd just save my breath. Um, but that's a little different question, I guess. It's what would I do differently? I'd probably start sooner. Yeah. Do more, get more aggressive. Um, I think I made pretty good decisions by looking at other people that I didn't want to be and doing the opposite of what they're doing. Um, so I'm pretty happy with where everything's at um that being said some of the properties i've sold over the years if i knew then uh, i would have bought everything i possibly could right like there's some acreages in south surrey that were going for 600 grand in 2006 sheesh (laughs) and now they're like you know tens of maybe 100 million dollar development sites right so if you only could have known um 
Is that an direct enough? I probably yeah, just would have started earlier. I probably would have been I would have been more aggressive. Um, I didn't have the confidence or the upbringing to be in real estate, right? Like I was, my whole family is like union workers, right? So there was no like it was like get a job, go to work. It wasn't, and that's probably worked out well for me because mm -hmm. I'm still office guy every day, but um, I didn't have like the. I hate it when realtors say they're entrepreneurs because it's such BS. Um, it's just not true. Um, risk just wasn't something that really ran through your family. No risk. Yeah. None. Right? I'm still five-year fixed man. Like, that's the way it goes. <laughs> right? So no risk for sure. And I take a little bit more risk now, but not much. Right? Yeah. So take some chances, young people. What's your, uh, what's your biggest win? Uh, I taught myself a Rubik's Cube. Do Lately, really? yeah, three by three, I can master in about uh, a minute and forty-five seconds, which is not fast, by the way. It's like four seconds is like three and a half seconds is the world championship. Um, That's still pretty sick. It's not bad. Yeah, uh, and I just mastered the. Well, I wouldn't call it mastered. I can do the four by four. So when you now. say you taught yourself it, did you actually figure it out, or did you? No, no, no. You, you can't figure yeah, it out. You, just you gotta it learn it. Right, it's a process. It's not okay. a you don't go like, oh, I did it. Like that's not the way it works, right? You there's no way. There's no way to figure it out just by no, no chance. Messing around, never gonna do it. Never gonna. Do How it. did the first person solve it then? Uh, I think the first person probably made it and then figured it out from there. But I don't but know. Even though they made it, <laughs> lots of people didn't have TVs back then, so they had a lot of free time. Um, <laughs> no, but in, in seriousness, uh, biggest win. Wait, win is that what you said? Yeah, biggest, biggest win. Uh, marriage. Successful marriage? Yeah, that's a good answer. I'll take right. that. It's yeah. a that's, common that's, answer too. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Yeah, man. When you find uh, this, this life is meant to be shared, and when you find the right person, there's nothing better. And I'm sure I don't know, but I'm sure when you find the wrong person, there's probably nothing worse. <laughs> right. I come from a split house, so I didn't kind of know how that goes. But um, yeah, when you find the right person, that's maybe one thing. If I would, if I would know now how it would have turned out with me and my wife, we would have got married a lot earlier. And probably had kids earlier. Because, man, they're exhausting. <laughs> okay. And do you have a biggest loss? Something that... Biggest loss. Uh, I know my faults, and I can't fix them. And what would that be? Uh, I don't have compassion, really. <laughs> I might be a serial <laughs> killer. Um, I don't have a lot of empathy for people that make stupid decisions. Um, and I don't have a lot of patience. I know these are my faults and fixing them. I don't know how to do that yet. It's not, it's not easy. Um, I think life is actually really easy. Uh, if you just do things, you know, you're supposed to do and most people don't do mm -hmm. them. So, um, I probably have to get better at having compassion for other people and maybe stop arguing with people in my YouTube comments. I could probably use a little bit of that too, yeah. to be honest. Are you like passionate or, or like stubborn? I actually, a lot of people don't know this about me, but I am very empathetic. I don't seem like it because mm -hmm. I kind of seem like an asshole on my TikTok, but I I do have a lot of empathy. Um, but I, I, yeah, I argue with people a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, yeah, 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 I let them hear it. But I also make people look very stupid too. So I think I'm pretty successful in doing that. Yeah, here's the problem though. Like, yeah, I, I'm the same. The problem is we think we made them feel stupid and to them, you look even stupid. That's the thing, they think they and won. And that's what I'm not. Because the, all they're trying to do is piss you off. There's people like the yeah. YouTube comments that are just trying to piss me off and you know, they're probably successful sometimes. <laughs> um, but really we're all coming from different perspectives and um, yeah, being able to have compassion for the perspective of another person is probably a weakness of mine. Because I'm like, if you just did it my way, you'd be fine. Yeah. Right? But yeah. you're not going to do it my way because you're not living my life and I need to be able to respect that. So. Yeah. Stubbornness probably is right in there too. Yeah. I'm pretty as stubborn as they get. That's a good answer. Right. I'll take that answer. So. Okay, well, you, you have the floor. What do you say to the listeners out there? Word of advice? What have we not already said? I don't know. You, said, you actually said something pretty good that was something... Phone's ringing. You said something good earlier, but I don't remember what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta watch it back so yeah. we don't get uh, get in trouble. Um, no, I don't know. Like, I, I can I ask you guys a couple questions? Yeah, yeah. go for it. What is like with this? 
what is your goal with this podcast? My goal since day one is to get every single person in Canada to know who I am. And mm-hmm. this just helps me do that. Um, remember I sat down with my, uh, now he's my partner, but at the time he was my boss, Sean Zubor. And he's like, what, what is your business plan? And I said, I'm going to, I'm going to get famous. <laughs> and he laughs. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. The TikTok thing blew up. Did like 57 deals in my first year off that. So I'd say it's going to plan so far. So we're just going to keep doing stuff that gets me in front of more people. Mm -hmm. That's basically the plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My goal is really just like, it's an opportunity for me to meet a new person in the industry every single time. Yeah. Um, So over time, like pretty much everyone, and they're primarily the people that are like real real estate related. We've had a couple, we've had, I think a couple brokers on, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like a couple of years from now, pretty much everyone on the real estate side of things, especially because the people we're having on actually have some kind of influence in their office too. They're not just brand new agents and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty much everyone will know who I am. Like if I go to an event or something, I'll, I'll know like tons of faces there. Um, it's just a good way to meet people. That's the only reason mm-hmm. why I'm really doing it. Yeah, it's interesting, it. right? It's like, uh, it's like the visibility yeah. thing, right? You got to be able to be seen. I spent a lot of my career Um, of what I think is probably being the most capable agent that nobody knew. And then really that doesn't help. Right. So you got to get out there. So this is awesome. You You can't be the secret agent. And, um, uh, like Tom, my friend, Tom story has a saying like visibility beats ability. And I never really took that to heart. And I was like, why are these, people like from our coaching program stuff like I'm not getting referrals I don't know why I'm not getting referrals and they're going to other people and I'm like oh it's because I'm the shy guy at the conference that yeah. doesn't get in front of people so it's awesome that you can do that the only tricky part about that is you got to make sure you're filling the ability part at the same time because yep, if you have that if you have the visibility part and then no, no substance behind it it's only going to last so long 100% yeah, right yeah. so you really got to build that up so you're on a team I actually manage the team now. Oh, know? yeah? Yeah. Cool. No, so, it's, but it's interesting to see teams because I'm seeing so many different variations. Like, we have a very tight team. Other people, like, have, like, let's call them broker- mini brokerages, right? So there's so many different options. I think it's really cool. Um, but, the, again, getting back to what they're going to crack down on. Did you get the – I think it was yesterday, actually, the BCFSA with their big email coming out saying – no, BCREA. The crackdown coming down on teams is going to be huge. So it's just really? another, yeah. I didn't even see that. Yep, they're they're coming. Mm-hmm. They're starting with guys that are pretending they're teams and not teams. They're starting mm-hmm. with those guys. You know, like the mortgage brokers, like part of their team, and the home inspectors, oh. part of their team, and and they're the really big real estate group, and they're yeah. not. Um, but they're going to start cracking down on like correct agency and that sort of thing because there's also a bunch of people that work together not legally as a team but they act like a team those are you know there's all sorts of different there's agency issues and stuff like that yeah all that different stuff Um, so those are all things that are coming but but another reason like to go back to your original question that i do this is i genuinely do like helping people and i have a passion for uh, this doesn't sound stupid but i have a passion for knowledge so i've been like a religious learner of things for like six years now Mm -hmm. like i even when i was back when i was plumbing or actually like seven years now i'd go home and i'd literally just like watch youtube read books and listen to podcasts for like five hours like i didn't watch any netflix for like years and uh i like i have a passion for that stuff so i like talking about it right um those are most of the conversations i have now like with my friends or whoever i'm talking to it's just about stuff that i've learned where i want to go goals that kind of stuff so um, i like to share that with people too and find like-minded people who also like that stuff right yeah. so is it amazing in this industry how much of that there is yeah right people don't for people from the outside don't understand like the oh, amount of yeah. things yeah. like coaching right the, all those different steps that go into like um we had on our podcast we had um Brandon Ogmanson and he was like you know realtors are the most positive people there are 
Like they just are. They're just positive. It's pretty much have to work on like self development to even do half half it's, decent in, in real estate. It, it takes so either. much character development to be a good realtor that it's just that I find, yeah, I would agree with you that because at the end of the day people are, are buying you too to work with, not just the product. They're they're you're selling yourself. So if you mm-hmm. can't actually be a personable person, then it's not it's not gonna work. Yeah. No totally. one likes you. Yeah, if you're shopping on price, don't reach yeah. out to me. Right, yeah. simple as that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. There's so there's so many things that go on there. Like teams, I just think are the best thing possible if they're run correctly. I think they're fantastic, and I think everybody should be on. I don't know how single agents do it. Yeah. I don't know how you can do it for your own uh, mental health as a single agent, and I also don't know how then you can service your clients properly either. Right. It's just I just don't see a future in it for me anyway I mean if, if it was me running on my own I'd be divorced and making half the money <laughs> and then I'd get half of that to my what would have been my ex-wife but yeah. that's not happening because yeah. we're, we're in good <laughs> yeah man uh, yeah I don't right. know. cool man well hey thanks that's all for we com- got that's, that's all we got for today super fun yeah this was a good podcast I thought we were gonna I was actually you know what I was, I was gonna talk about the market more but I actually appreciated talking about everything else a little bit more because i think we've talked about the market quite a bit on this podcast so that was a good discussion maybe if we solved anything probably not i don't think so but think either way sick conversation and ferguson if, if he's still watching won't uh won't agree <laughs> with us but uh, it's all gonna end tomorrow <laughs> it's all ending tomorrow we're done you know what detach homes in surrey are gonna be 150 grand again <laughs> yeah. and uh you're still not gonna be able to buy one because you're not gonna have a job by the time that happens. Uh, so. hey, that's what people forget. Like, if it gets bad, it gets bad because there's no more money. Yeah. Right? And then as it gets bad, now we're starting to find out that people are, people with the money buy up the real estate. Yeah. Right? So it's more of like the, the haves get more and yeah. then the have-nots are worse off, right? So that's why I say get in. Get into real estate. Get into real estate. I, I always say be careful what you wish for because if that detached home is ever 500 grand again you mm-hmm. have no idea what economic circumstances yeah. would have to exist yeah. for that to be elon possible. would be right we got the full like population collapse yeah right yeah that's that's what would have to happen yeah something like that yeah, it might be there it might yeah. be there possibly yeah. it might be there anyways if you're still watching this subscribe to the podcast leave us a rating on spotify so we can be the number one podcast in at least vancouver and um I appreciate everybody that left a rating, by the way, and I appreciate all the subscribers, and we will see you guys on the next one. Peace.